Greetings. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this webinar on super continuum generation and Raman's self frequency shift in photonic crystal fibers. Fiber modeling was performed by Amin Korshid Ahmad. The presentation is being done by our VP of Optical Systems, Ahmed Atiyeh, and myself, Scott Newman, the product lead for OptiMode. We'll be taking questions at the end of the webinar. So please use the webinar control panel to submit your questions. Today's presentation will focus on the use of photonic crystal fibers with the Optimo product in order to determine parameters for integration into the Opti system product for the modeling super continuum generation as well as the Raman uh, shift. We'll start with an overview of photonic crystal fibers. We'll move into an overview of the OptiMode product, and then we'll review param the parameters that can be extracted from the product. At this point, I will hand the presentation over to Ahmed, who will review the use of those parameters within the OptiSystem product. Photon crystal fibers provide a high degree of configurability and allow tuning of modal dispersion, birefringence, confine and confinement in order to support a wide range of applications. There are two fundamental classes for photonic crystal fibers. The first is the high index core. This is the situation where the core index is higher than that of the surrounding materials. Usually this is achieved by putting a photonic crystal structure of air holes that reduces the average index around the core. Confinement is achieved through the refractive index contrast in the same manner as a conventional fiber. The second class is the photonic band gap fiber. And these are the ones that we'll be focusing on today. These ones have a low index or air core, and therefore they do not have the same confinement operation as a conventional fiber. In these fibers, the photonic crystal structure and the band gap that comes with it is such that the, the light propagating through the core cannot propagate outside of the core and therefore confinement is achieved. Photonic crystal fibers can be used in a wide range of applications as we discussed. These applications include nonlinear optics, extreme dispersion characteristics, endlessly single mode fibers, high power beam delivery, particle trapping, as well as sensors, which was the topic of one of our recent webinars with the OptiMode product. In order to address these application spaces, our OptiMode product can be generate data used by our other products. These parameters can be the propagation constants, attenuations, effective area, or even the fields. In today's webinar, as we've discussed, we're going to be looking at how these parameters can be used within the OptiSystem product. OptiMode has a number of mode solvers available to the users, but the one we're going to be looking at, and the one that's ideally suited for photonic crystal fibers, is the vector finite element mode, uh, method mode solver. The finite element mode solver that's used in the product makes use of an adaptable triangulation to form the computational mesh. This triangulation is powerful because it's non-uniform and it's able to adapt to the refractive index contrasts as well as expected field distributions. Users can refine the results by tailing the parameters of the triangulization, either by specifying minimum angles for the triangles, min max edge lengths or max areas. These are the guiding parameters that the algorithm then uses as it builds the triangular mesh. You can also specify the type of the mesh where the algorithm takes into consideration material quantities or you can use a file to drive that triangulization. Photon crystal fibers generally are, are rotationally symmetric, but they are a bit complex. You're not necessarily going to want to manually create these and, and tweak them every time. And to that end, OptiMode has two features available to users. The first one is access to the Visual Basic scripting environment. 
this allows users to create scripts that will generate the structures, modify the structures, or even queue up specific analysis for those structures. To further support this and to help users learn the syntax of the VB script within the OptiMode environment, what you can do is you can partly create your structure and then you can ask the product to generate a script that would create that structure. So you can see what the code would look like and how you would modify it. The second thing available to users is the parameterization of structure parameters. This allows users to simplify parameter sweeps. They can be used within their scripting environments and just all around just allow you to parameterize your structure. Typical examples in these applications would be to set a parameter for the air hole radius or for the lattice constant. Material dispersion is addressed through the Selmeyer models or through the Lorentz Drude fitting algorithms. The Lorentz Drude materials allow users to either specify the parameters for the model, which is seen here where the user can enter in the specific, the strength, the plasma frequency, the resonant frequency, and the damping, or the user can import the data set, either from experimental or from a reference that the product can then do a fit to and then use through the simulations. The final aspect of setting up a simulation is, ob is obviously the boundary conditions. And for the use of this application, this class of application, there are two that we're gonna be looking at. The first is an absorbing boundary condition, or a PML, that allows the domain to be truncated with a lossy boundary, allowing the simulation domain to be reduced, and allows the calculation of complex effective indices for leaky modes. The second type of boundary condition we're going to be looking at is symmetric boundary conditions. And these are particularly useful when structures have symmetry. They can be used to reduce the domain to either mirror symmetry or fourfold symmetry, or they can be used to target specific polarizations. And a final last parameter just to touch on is the finite element method also allows users to specify a best estimate for the modal index that they're looking for. This allows designers to better target the search for a specific mode if that's what they're looking for. So the structure that we're gonna look at today, as I said, um, is a photon crystal, uh, modal, uh, photon crystal fiber. This one is a solid core actually, um, but it's set up as a photonic crystal band structure. So we have a triangular lattice of air holes in silica. The air hole diameter is 1.3 microns with a lattice spacing of 1.7 microns. In photonic crystal parlance, this gives you an R over A constant of 0 0.38, which sets up your stop band the structure in question has a fourfold symmetry. As we can see here, this is the mesh that we get when we set up the mesh with symmetric boundary conditions. And you can actually see that the mesh is non-uniform and it specifically tailors to contrasts in dielectric and changes in that dielectric. When analyzing complex structures, there are two primary areas where users can configure the simulation mesh to improve overall accuracy. This is the parameter of the triangle, triangle tess tessellation, as well as the boundary conditions. I've discussed both of those already, um, but for this particular simulation, these are the settings we use. We set up the symmetric walls on the insides of the structure, and on the outside of the structure, we set up the PML. And then these are the specifications we used for angle, length, and area for the triangles. Once the Optimo product is allowed to run with its calculations, it determines the modes and it provides the information for those modes. For example, here we're taking a look at field distributions, but we're also provided the modal index, the effective mode area, as well as 
the group velocity dispersion as well as a third order dispersion. One of the results from this analysis is actually the dispersion analysis results, which are shown here. Zooming in on this graph, we can see that the zero dispersion wavelength of this structure is 780 nanometers, which is what was expected for this design based on the reference by Dudley et al. in 2006. I'll also note that in that reference, the pump wavelength that was used was actually 835 nanometers, which is indicated up in the top right of the diagram. That's the wavelength we're going to extract our parameters from in order to proceed with the opti system analysis. And as a final touching point, we're going to take a look at the results that are extracted and will be used in the Opti system product, but we're going to take a look at them relative to the results from the Dudley et al. paper. And we can, while the modal effective area wasn't reported by the reference, we do see that beta 2, beta 3, and the nonlinear parameter are all within excellent agreement, not to mention the exact match with the zero dispersion wavelength. So these parameters can now be taken and they can be used within fiber models within the OptiSystem product to simulate the behavior of the fiber within the larger system. At this point, I, I'm complete, I'm done the OptiMode portion of this, and I will be handing off the presentation to our VP of uh, Optical Systems, Ahmed Atsie. Hello, everyone, and good morning, uh, good afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And um, now I'm going to continue on the um, webinar, which is related to the uh, modeling of the signal transmission. And hide this one here. So um, the, this part again is the, related to the modeling of the signal transmission in the photonic crystal fiber uh, using Opti system software. And in this part of the uh, talk, uh, we're going to talk about some features of Opti system. Then I'm going to discuss uh, the transmission models used in Opti system, uh, which includes the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, and then uh, a GN model, which is uh, recently added to Opti system. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, mainly about the uh, modeling of uh, signal transmission in photonic crystal fiber using Opti system. I'm going to show a live dis demonstration of the different uh, uh, projects uh, related to this, and then we can open into the um, question and answers. Okay, next is the um, Features of Opti system mainly uh, Opti system allow uh, users uh, to design, simulate, and the prototype uh, different optical and electrical um, systems using the comprehensive uh, libraries and components in, in, in the software. And uh, in Opti system, uh, one, one, one major advantage is we simulate all the physical characteristics of optical fiber. Uh, including the linear and nonlinear effects, such as, uh, let's say, attenuation and dispersion in the linear part and the nonlinear parts, including the cell phase modulation, cross phase modulation, forward mixing, stimulated brilliant scattering, stimulated drama and scattering, self steepening, relay scattering as well. Uh, Opti system has a huge library of uh, visualizers which you can monitor signals everywhere in the system, uh, including uh, in the time domain or uh, spectral domain as well as uh, if you want to monitor the binary signals and memory signals. Opti system also has advantage that it can uh, operate with uh, or uh, communicate with uh, other software like MATLAB, Python, Scilab, and C++. So Opti system has components which you can write your own code in them and then uh, uh, work with these codes in Opti system. Okay. In this part here, we're going to talk about the models which are uh, uh, used in uh, solving signal transmission on optical fibers. 
Uh, and one, the first one is the non Schrodinger equation, which is well-known equation. Uh, and it has, as you see here, the terms uh, for attenuation, the group velocity dispersion, and the third order dispersion, the uh, nonlinear effect, which is related to self-phase modulation. This equation is a single equation, as you see, so it only addresses self-phase modulation. For cross-phase modulation, we're going to have coupled equations, and depends on the, 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 uh, the design. And then this part here, we're going to have the self-steepening, and finally, the Raman effects in, in the last term. Now, this equation is solved uh, using the split uh, step Fourier method in OPTIS system. And uh, now, this, uh, when you design your system, basically, and uh, you use many wavelengths and uh, long length of fiber and so on, if the system is complicated, you're going to take hours to solve this, uh, these equations in the system for the, the, whole, the whole project. So an alternative approach, which we added up recently in Opti system, which is called the GN model. The GN model, we have a webinar on Opti Wave website. You can take a look at there where we describe the, the concepts. However, like the advantage of this scheme is can uh, reduce the time dr drastically from hours, maybe to sub minutes uh, to, for these kind of calculations. Okay. Now, next is going to talk about uh, quickly about the continuum generation, uh, in, uh, which can be done in Opti system. Here we have uh, uh, a scheme where we can uh, have a CW laser and uh, amplify it, let's say, to about 40 dBm and launch it through a dispersion shifted fiber. This is the characteristics of the dispersion shifted fiber. Uh, and then uh, after that, you, sh uh, you should be able to get uh, about uh, 2.6 nanometer continuum, as you see here. Uh, the other type of uh, continuum generation can be done using soliton pulses. And if you um, select, for example, select a, a soliton pulse with about uh, 680 pico uh, watt, as you say, see here, uh, then uh, and amplify it to about uh, that level. Uh, transmitted through dispersion shifted fiber should be able to get a very broad uh, continuum, which is around 100 nanometers. And uh, this is one of the papers which we publish on, on this topic. Uh, another scheme which is used for also continuum generation is the, um, uh, can be for uh, optoelectronics scheme, can be used as a comp, uh, where you can uh, modulate um, a CW laser using a sinusoidal wave. And uh, then depends on the uh, frequency of the sinusoidal wave, you can have different uh, separation between this CW light. And uh, this uh, uh, continuum generation here or comp generation here, it's kind of about maybe five nanometer. You can cascade many of those uh, uh, modulators and you should be able to get much more broader uh, comp here. Uh, now the advantage of this scheme is, is you can get the, the, these CW tones and you can demultiplex them and get uh, each one of them. And uh, some work here is being done on uh, the um, continuum or comp generation into a, a passive optical network where you can take each laser and modulate it with a certain uh, a modulation scheme and then eventually uh, do the transmission. I'm going to show you all these examples separately later on, uh, but now going to move into the uh, main topic here, which is about uh, uh, modeling the transmission of uh, signals uh, in photonic crystal fiber using Opti system. So the approach, as uh, Scott was mentioning, um, you need to design the photonic crystal fiber structure in Opti mode, and then uh, after that, you extract the parameters uh, related to that structure. Uh, from Opti mode, which relates like the dispersion parameter, uh, group loss dispersion, third order dispersion, uh, for example, effective area, nonlinear refractive index, uh, and as well as attenuation. And then what you do is you take these parameters and then you plug them into the uh, different available components uh, in Opti system uh, for fiber, uh, which we uh, use here in, in Opti system, we have two type or three types actually of fiber components, as you see here. Uh, you can find them in the under the directory of optical fiber. Uh, you go default and then optical fiber. 
and then you have optical fiber component, bidirectional component, and nonlinear fiber component. This component, when you double click on it, you're gonna get the uh, component property pop-up window. And in each one of these tabs, you're gonna have the parameters which you start uh, plug this uh, parameter extracted from the optimal design and apply them in here. So uh, the structure we're gonna talk about here uh, for the super continuum is the uh, structure here, which we have a pulse uh, with 50 femtosecond uh, width, uh, soliton pulse set at 835 nanometer. And the, 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 as mentioned by Scott, this is mainly uh, the source available most probably by the, the, by the authors, Dudley's and uh, et al. Uh, then we're gonna uh, set up the power level to 10 kilowatt peak power. Uh, and then we set up the parameters of the fiber according to what we extracted from the, uh, the OptiMod software and then we run the simulation. Simulation is gonna take some time, and then once you're done, you can look at the spectrum generated. Here, some of these parameters as we enter into OptiSystem. So you have here the uh, dispersion parameter. Uh, we have in OptiSystem, uh, if the component, you can run it in the uh, frequency domain or in, the, in, in, in uh, you can select it in the other domain, uh, time domain. Now, uh, if you unselect this one, you should be act, have access to the dispersion parameter. If you select it in the frequency domain, you're gonna have the groove velocity dispersion parameter. Now the parameter here extracted at 835 nanometer is minus 11, 83 picosecond square per kilometer. Uh, if you do the calculation, you should be able to get dispersion around 9.28 picosecond. So it depends on the mode of operation of the component. You can enter this parameter here or, or the parameter in the group velocity dispersion. Third order dispersion, uh, the parameter is 0 0.081 picosecond cube per kilometer. And the other parameters we extract is the effective area here. We have 2.4 micrometers square. And the nonlinear refractive index is 35. Uh, um, uh, 10 minus 21 uh, meters square per watt. Now, uh, usually in, in the Opti mode, uh, you have the effective um, refractive index, and from the effective refractive index, it's a complex parameter. Uh, you have the real part and the imaginary part. The imaginary part is mainly used for the attenuation and uh, to extract the attenuation parameter, and the real part, you can extract all the dispersion uh, parameters from it. Uh, this here, the simulation, which we're going to show you later on uh, the result in Opti system. But this, these results are uh, um, simulated at different length of fiber. So we have, which represents basically the photonic crystal fiber uh, length. So here we have the pulses at the zero centimeter, just uh, at the launch. And then after 0.5 centimeter, you start to get the pulses as you see in the time domain here, start to get a bit narrower, and then you can get broader spectra, and eventually increase the length more, two centimeter, five centimeter, 10 and 15. And as you can see here, the progress of the pulses, they start to shift and they start to get narrower, and they start to produce as well a higher order solitons. And by the end, like of 15 centimeter, you can have the broad, uh, broad spectrum in here. Now these results are uh, extracted uh, and uh, compared to the references by Ranka and uh, Dudley. And the, these are the uh, results published in this uh, reference. And it's, as you can see, the uh, results matches very well between the uh, simulation and, and the uh, paper, published paper which shows the validity of the concept we are introducing here of, of uh, simulating the uh, signal transmission on photocrystal fiber using Opti system component, which is optical fiber component. Okay, uh, now before I go here, or let's, we can continue the, the, the whole uh, presentation, then we go to the live demonstration. Uh, the, the, uh, the Raman cell frequency shift is, is a similar, uh, similar concept uh, as we saw it in the supercontinuum generation. Uh, what we have, we have here is uh, the pulses uh, because of their uh, width and because of the nonlinearity in the, in the uh, photocrystal fiber, uh, you should be able to experience uh, frequency shift 
in the frequency domain uh, and uh, temporal shift as well. Uh, and this is related to the energy of the pulses. So we, here we repeat the uh, measurements also again, just to compare it with the published work. Uh, we have 20 second femtosecond uh, pulses, uh, uh, silicon pulses at 835 nanometers uh, with a peak power of uh, 837 uh, watt. Once we do the transmission, uh, set up the parameters in the fiber, again, with the parameters extracted here, the beta 2 in minus 11.83, beta 3 is 0 0.083 because I can the cube per kilometer, and then we set the nonlinear refractive index and uh, the other parameters. And then we run the, uh, the, uh, the simulation in Opti system. Then we can see the pulses, as you can see here, the pulses, original pulses here, and they start to temporal shift and which is around uh, about 1.35 picosecond uh, shift. However, the pulses in the uh, frequency domain, as you can see here, the pulses starts at this uh, uh, level of center frequency, which is 835 nanometers, and then it starts to shift here, as you see, about 55 nanometers. Now, this concept is, is attractive uh, for some application, which we did uh, some time ago in 2007. Uh, we use this concept of Raman cell frequency shift for uh, demultiplexing time domain signals. So what we do here in the experiment, we uh, take a stream of pulses at uh, certain pulses, and we time domain uh, multiplex them. And then what we do, we control the levels or energy in each each component here and then transmit it through the fibers. Now, each depends on the energy of these pulses. These pulses would be separated in the frequency domain, and then eventually we can demultiplex them and then detect each pulse. As you see here is the frequency domain for each pulse stream separated based on the energy of these pulses. Okay, with this, uh, basically, I, I finished the, the, the simulation the, or the presentation part. I'm gonna go right now to the simulation where I'm going to start here with the, the part uh, uh, using the continuum generation using, um, let's say here, the photon crystal fiber. I, some of this simulation I uh, calculated like earlier today because it takes a couple of hours to, to finish, but this one is like a fast one. As you can see here, we have the sinusoidal signal set at uh, the about 125 or about 12.5 gigahertz uh, and the pulses amplitude is nine and then units. Uh, this is pulses is going through the modulator. The modulator is just regular uh, dual port Maxinder modulator with some setting here. You can control where you want it to bias the modulator. If you click on the help button here, you can see the theory of the component and then the where is the modulation happening. Now it depends on the settings of the modulation then the, the output would change. Uh, so it's very important to know the, the settings. And then we amplify here just only for, again, the experiment which we did for passive optical network transmission. So you can see here, for example, the output of the, of the uh, amplifier is compared with the input pulses with the CW. So this is the CW and after pass modulation, you're gonna get the comp or the continuum uh, generation. Now what we do here, we demultiplex using a demultiplexer and then you're gonna see a single tone at, the, at each wavelength set by the demultiplexer. So this is the, the one type of the, uh, of the um, continuum generation. And then the other type we can look at it here is the, uh, this part here is using the CW light. So we have the CW laser sitting at uh, 193. You can look at the uh, wavelength here, which is 952.52 nanometers. The power level is 10 dBm set at this uh, this laser, and then uh, we amplify. So the amplifier here block we have gain of 30 dB and output power set at 40 dBm. Once you set the power, you go to the fiber. Now the fiber here we use the uh, regular fiber, uh, as you can see in each of these uh, uh, tabs here. You have different parameters. You set the wavelength. You set the uh, length of the fiber. You said the attenuation, the attenuation can be at a single or a wavelength, like, I mean, if you have, this is something for, for other application when you have DWM signals, but you can have 
the wavelength, uh, the attenuation at, uh, is extracted from a file at different wavelengths. So you can load your own file, as you see here, from the location where you save the file. And then eventually, you, what you do is you go to the dispersion parameter, you enter the parameters here, uh, dispersion. Uh, now, as I said here, it's dispersion shifted fiber I use, so it's zero. Uh, because I can bear kilometer nanometer, and you have the other parameters BMD, uh, nonlinear effects. Here we set the effective area 45 micrometer square, and um, you can see the uh, nonlinear refractive index as well. We set up the uh, Raman fraction, Raman con contribution, and uh, other parameters here uh, setting up parameters for the cal calculation and conversion, and then with that you run. Once you run the, you can see as here, the input signal is the CW and the output is the, uh, the continuum, which is limited here as we see. Uh, the calculation takes about two hours, as, as I mentioned in here. The other part, which also uh, gonna show you here, it's the uh, launching uh, pulse. As you see here, one, we launch one pulse. Uh, we set it up by, uh, by the, C the random bit sequence generator through the secant hyperbolic pulses, just silicon pulses. At, this is set at 10 uh, watt at this wavelength, uh, and then um, amplified. Uh, the pulses width is, is, is 200 femtosecond. How we set it up, we go to the global parameter in here, and uh, in the global parameter, we set the bit rate here, which is one terahertz. With the one terahertz, we uh, control the uh, the bit period and then within the bit period we control the pulse width here as you see with the width here it's about 0.2 of bit period which ends up to be 200 femtosecond okay and then once you uh, set up the amplifier also set parameters here gain and, and power levels and then the fiber parameters here we use again dispersion shifted fiber uh, and you do the transmission, it takes about also two hours to, to, to calculate, and then eventually you're gonna get this continuum. This is the original spectrum of the soliton pulse, and this is the continuum generation. Uh, now going to the simulation part of the super continuum, uh, which we use into, into the, uh, this presentation, um, we can see that the, uh, fiber here we have single pulse launched into uh, silicon pulses with a width of 50 femtosecond. Again, we put the global parameter into one terahertz to control the bit period uh, and then control the width of the pulses within the bit period. Uh, then we go to the fiber and this is the parameters of the fiber uh, which we extracted from the OptiMode. Uh, the, this is the length of the fiber here. We have uh, 10 uh, centimeters of fiber. Uh, and then this is the dispersion of the fiber extracted, beta two, the group velocity dispersion, and beta three, third order dispersion. This is the nonlinear parameters. This is the effective area, which is 2.05 micrometers square, and the nonlinear uh, refractive index. Okay, and then the other parameters here is the simulation parameters. You can you can read about them uh, from the help here. It can uh, provides you a lots of information. Then once you run this simulation, it's going to take uh, different. Uh, like I mean, depends on the the uh, length of the fiber. It can be a few minutes to uh, hours. Uh, in in the simulation here, what we do is actually I'm having this component just prepared just to show you. Uh, to get all these results, we sweep the length of the fiber. So here, if you can see, we have different mode of operation. We have normal, sweep, and script. So in sweep, uh, once we do sweep, we can select how many iteration we can go through the sweep. So we are running right now from zero to 15 centimeters. Uh, you can uh, control the process of this sweeping. There's a few webinars uh, on the website of OptiWave where we can explain the process of the, the uh, how to set up the sweeping and the number of sweeps and the, the, the steps of sweep and so on. But once you do the sweep here and then you run, you do the calculation, the calculation 
Uh, you run the calculation and eventually you're going to get this is the spectrum input of the solid impulses and this is the continuum which we saw in the presentation uh, uh, today. And the last part of the demo here is the super uh, the Raman cell frequency shift. This is the Raman cell frequency shift uh, calculation. We have again one pulse here this as beginning of the of this sequence. Uh, we set it up, and the pulse width here is 20 femtosecond. Again, we have one terahertz, uh, one terahertz uh, bit uh, bit rate, which give you about uh, uh, one over like uh, one picosecond width, and uh, of this bit period, then you control the wavelength of the pulses here, the power of the pulses, the width of the pulses, and then you transmit it through the fiber, which represents the photonic crystal fiber with the parameters, uh, uh, and again, the length, the attenuation, and everything else uh, into, the, into this parameter. Once it's done, uh, you can get the results here. We have the pulses here. This is the original pulse, and this is the shifted pulses, and the spectrum, as you can see here, the original spectrum and this is the uh, shifted uh, spectrum of these soliton pulses. With this, I would uh, conclude the presentation, and then I'm going to go to the uh, question and period. So if you have any questions, we, we are open right now to answer these questions. So is there any question? Uh, we were addressing a number of them during the presentation, Ahmed. I, I don't know if there's any additional ones. OK. So. Um, there's a question here that says how to find the dispersion and high order dispersion uh, by using OptiWave. So the, the question is again is, is as explained by uh, my colleague Scott earlier. Uh, once we do the design in, in Opti mode and uh, the structure, this uh, photocrystal fiber structure, you run the simulation there and you should be able to uh, extract the parameters from uh, the software the software can provide you with all these parameters like the uh, group loss dispersion the uh, third order dispersion as well as the attenuation the effective area so all of these parameters are extracted and that's the beautiful of working both the opti mode and opti system together for this kind of exercise so So there is a question about, uh, I think Scott, you can answer it maybe about how to simulate the tapered uh, photonic crystal fiber. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, because your propagation parameters are going to change as you move down uh, through a tapered uh, photonic crystal fiber, you're not going to be able to model it in the same way that uh, Ahmed and I are doing it here by linking it in throughout the system. You would actually need to use something. Um, more akin to our Opti BPM product or our Opti FDTD product, depending on the, the constraints of your simulation. So those products, what they would do is they would take the initial mode from Opti mode, they would inject it into their simulation domain, and then they would step it through the structure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ahmed, I believe that's what we would have to do with, with tapered uh, fibers, unless yeah. you've got something within system that can model that. No, in, in system, what we do is what we get the parameters from Opti mode. That's what we use usually in the system. So all the design uh, and simulation of the photonic crystal fiber is done in, in, in Opti mode. And then the parameters are extracted into Opti system and use an Opti system. Hmm. OK, that's, that's, what, that's what I thought. So if your parameters are changing uh, during propagation, you would need to use a beam propagation method, which we have. 
for the uh, the finite difference time domain method we we have. Both of those are standalone products um, that OptiMode comes installed with. Okay. Um, another question, I think, is someone asking about the relay scattering here. I'm just trying to catch up. Uh, so you mentioned that the possibility to simulate relay scattering. Could you comment on that? So as as you can see here in Opti System uh, components, um, let me just put this down and then uh, uh, take take one of the fibers components. If you go to the libraries of the uh, in the optical fiber library and you have the bidirectional fiber component here if you double click on it and then you can see in under enhance here you can see the relay scattering so you can activate the relay scattering and you should be able to see the relay scatter signal as a power level as well as a time domain signal so uh, this is something which we added recently in in version 16 uh you can see the time domain version of the relay scattering which is which is a random signal in principle okay so look at that other question here so in in, in, in general if you could answer your question we will answer the questions after the webinar and email it to you but I'm trying to get also a few questions in the in this here. So, uh, do we need Opti Wave and Opti to design funding dispersion other parameters? I think the question here is: it's uh, do we need both software Opti Mode and Opti uh, System to do all this uh, work, uh, which is simulating uh, photonic crystal designing photonic crystal fiber, then uh, simulating it and uh, extracting the parameters and then and simulating an opti system. Definitely, you need both softwares uh, to do that uh, that functionality. Um, is it is it possible to share the opti system simulation files? Uh, definitely, we can share it uh, based on email. So if you send an email, we can we can send it. Um, we usually all these examples we put them into the example library of the next release. So if, uh, like, I mean, we are expecting a new release in within a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, which is 17.1, an update with the latest version, 17.0, which was uh, released by end of March. Uh, now, in th these examples, definitely we're gonna be uh, adding them up there. Um, Uh, a question to you, Scott, here. Uh, can I use Opti FDDT to extract photonic crystal fiber parameters? Yeah, I, I just saw that one. Um, it's going to depend on what specific parameters you're looking for. Um, the Opti mode, if you're looking for anything related to that mode that is supported by the photonic crystal fiber, the Opti mode product is what's ideally suited to do that. Um, the Opti mode product does come in. in installed with OptiFTTD because the two work very closely together. Um, if you're looking at propagation parameters, then yes, you would be using either the FTTD application or the OptiBPM applications. They would then take the mode, as I said before, they would take the mode, inject it, and then propagate it. So it's going to depend on what uh, photon crystal parameters you're, you're talking about here, but uh, yeah, between Opti mode and Opti FTTE, you you could do it. Okay. Um, there is another question actually about extracting uh, the betas four, five, uh, and uh, etc. Uh, in in Opti mode, you should be able from from the real part of the effective refractive index to extract all dispersion parameters. However, in Opti system, we allow using at this moment up to a third order dispersion. Uh, so um, that's that's what is there at this moment. So there is a question here: When you sweep the different fiber lengths from uh, from example 15 simulation, one centimeter, fifteen centimeter, do you uh, intermediate simulation represents what happens in a 15 centimeter fiber? 
Um, let me see the remainder of the question. Okay, uh, and it's intermediate point. So what's happened is, is in the simulation, when, um, when we run the simulation in sweep mode, uh, each each iteration is actually simulated kind of independently. Uh, in Opti system, we have a feature where you do have uh, something called multi-threading. Uh, I can show it to you here. Something called calculate multi-thread all sweep iteration and active layout. This one, if you select it, you should be able to run all these sweeps simultaneously uh, and during the calculation. So each sweep will be, this layout will be created with the specific setting of the parameter in the sweep. And then if you, let's say, for example, if you have 15 sweep, you're gonna have 15 layout running simultaneously, and that's the speed of the calculation. But each sweep is independent from the other one. And the results of it is independent from the results of the other, other sweeps. Um, I think it's, Scott, is, do you have anything you want to say? Or we can just uh, conclude the webinar and we answer the remaining of questions separately. Uh, yeah, we, we can definitely take up the, the, the questions separately and email the people individually. Um, the one thing I did want to touch on is uh, you were talking about sweeps. There's another question here that asked if the dispersion curve that's shown was done with a sweep. I'm assuming that's in regards to the dispersion curve that was shown for the Opti mode product. That would have been done with a uh, parameter sweep, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, at this moment, we can, what we can do is uh, we thank everyone for attending the, the webinar. We're gonna have the webinar available, uh, a recording of it uh, later on, and we're gonna send uh, uh, the uh, res responses to the questions to everyone. Uh, and if you need any question, you can uh, reach us at uh, support uh, uh, at optiweb.com or individual emails uh, listed by the, by the presentation. So thank you very much for attending.